Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of 2020. My name is Corey Peza here, as always, with Siobhan and Ben. And uh, this is our our 2022 year-end review episode. It, it's coming to the end of the year, and we don't feel like doing a lot. So this is where you're getting today. <laughs> it's sort of like Spotify, how they give you your year wrapped, and it shows you your favorite artists. So I guess we can go back and kind of say some of our favorite moments, or I don't know, just reflect on the year. It's that we get a rare moment to sort of be just the three of us and go over what we've done. I had to literally mentally check myself when Corey said it's a 2022 gear and review because I was like, what What year is it really? <laughs> is it still 2022? Was that, is it the end of that year? Is it the beginning of what year is it next? Because like I, I genuinely, I don't even know where I am. It's the two year anniversary of 2020 or 2020, I guess in this case. But wasn't that like the year that felt like forever? So technically isn't just, this should be like 2021 by now. It's just one big continuation. It's like when people ask what I did this year, I, I can't even remember. Who knows if what we talk about will even have happened in 2022. Well, so. who, who did we talk to this year? Because I feel like you guys need to go back and check out some of our guests. Because like the thing that I find, and I'm, I'm so thankful for, for being on this show, whatever this is, this podcast thing, is that we've talked to so many people that are above our pay grade. Like, I mean, like literally, and such a, a vast crazy smorgasbord of people from like Grammy award winners to like lawyers to people that like literally run towns and it, it never ceases to amaze me. Yeah. So I think it's a good idea. What we can do is we'll go back through our guests uh, that we've had and real quick, it'll be like kind of like, you know, word association. We'll see if we can give the quickest summary for our listeners and viewers that haven't checked out the episodes and, uh, and see if you guys, you know, maybe we can make you guys interested in going back and, uh, and binging some uh, older episodes. I should go uh, back and binge some of these older episodes because I'm. I, it's going to be a refresher for me. But let's go. Let's jump in. Well, we got to. We we'll just, we'll to? just start. We'll go backwards, right? So, so number one is our last episode prior to this one, which is Mr. Brock Richards. Dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't have done any better than that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not a, I, I'm not an impartial judge in this one, so I should defer to the two of you. No, I love Brock. Brock, I'm. I feel like we're 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 lucky to have Brock because there are so many people that care about Star Set, and the guy doesn't even talk to the people at the table, nevertheless on podcasts. So the fact that he'll come on this podcast because of you is fantastic. So for Star Set fans or people that just like you know music, Brock's awesome. Yeah, so definitely check that one out. Uh, going back a little further, we got Steve Stevens. Of Billy Idol. Yeah. yeah, just like that, like just his appearance. You have to watch the YouTube videos for for his episodes. And we've done it before. But I don't know if the first episodes we did were this year. But every time he comes back, it's the hair is on point. The sunglasses. He just is a total vibe. He, he's 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 so recognizable just from a silhouette. Like he's been like literally silhouetted against like a stage skirt from behind when he's coming out with Billy Idol for like 50 years, 70 years now. So like, I mean, and he's so cool. Like, that's the thing is you could tell this guy it's the same as he was in 1983. And he was a cool <laughs> dude back then, too, I'm sure. He's the man. Uh, going back a little further, Ron DeChant, another star set fellow. I think Ben really loves talking about Ron because he's always got the perfect summary for who Ron is and what he does. So, Ben, you take this one. I think he's the furthest thing from a bass player. I, I mean, for I mean, anyone that listens to Star Set, they like they're like, of course he's not just a bass player because he's in Star Set. But for all those other people that don't listen to Star Set, like the seventeen of you, um, he's it, it's interesting because you know, as people that are trying to be in a band, like we're obviously in the band Lost Symphony, and we're always trying to learn how to do things from everyone that comes on the show. Ron's probably the MVP of all the episodes as far as like that guy does that. I always, always learn something whenever he's on. He's actually been on what I think like four, at least four times. So yeah, Ron's episodes are a masterclass. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely check that out. Business, music, all that fun stuff. Uh, Prior to that, Mr. Bob St. John with, with with some great Nuno, Nuno talk, Nuno Betancourt. Uh, He was a recording engineer, mixing engineer. Uh, Had a lot of fun on that one. That guy's, what a nice dude. Like, I wasn't sure because like when he when he first showed up and like he's in front of his whole studio desk with perfect lighting. I'm like, is this guy like, does he know that he's the awesomest and he's an asshole? And he's not. He's the coolest dude ever. And you understand why he has Grammys sitting on his mantle. Yeah, awesome. you notoriously messed up how many Grammys he had at the beginning of that episode. So if you want <laughs> to see good. Ben eat his well, words. American, 
In my defense, American Grammys. He has also like Spanish, Latino. I don't, I don't know, but he has Grammys and other. Are you saying those colors. are lesser Grammys? <laughs> no, they're just not considered normal Grammys when you like look up the Grammys on Wikipedia. Very true. <laughs> not normal Grammys. All right, moving on. And then uh, continuing on the star set train, uh, Corey Juba. Corey was fun. I knew that Corey would be like a good storyteller because he, me, me, Z, and Corey like to hang out on tour. So yeah, it's. It was cool to have him on because I didn't even know half the stuff that he told because he's such a new member. So for anyone that's new to the star set train or wanting to get in the full star set wrap of all the different members, Corey is the newest addition. So if you want to learn more about how he got in the band, definitely listen to that one. I mean, the thing is about Corey, though, it's kind of like if you had a crush on a girl and then you see her dating some other dude and then you have to talk to that dude and you kind of like that dude. That's how I feel when I talk to Corey. (laughs) I sense some bitterness. (laughs) No, I, I, I'm happy for him. It's me I'm more worried about. <laughs> yeah. I thought, oh, geez. I'm going through the uh, the archive here, and now old episodes are playing in my ear, so I apologize for that. Oh, boy. Um, so after Corey, uh, who do we have? Scrolling back. So many episodes, so many. Go- oh, Damien Real, was, oh which is God. like 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 definitely out of left field in terms of like our normal guest, but one of the, one of the more fascinating like episodes we've had, I think. Do you guys remember that? I like literally sent you guys, a, 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 we have like a group text going like the 2020 text. Cause we're fucking cool. Um, <laughs> and I messaged you guys and I was like, I sent you an, I fucking love science. If you guys don't know this, like, if you go and look up this, this, this journal, I fucking love science. They have the coolest shit. And this dude, Damien real, it's like, this guy copyrighted music. Like, that's pretty much the headline. Like, this guy copyrighted all of music. And I'm like, okay, I'll read. And when I read it, I'm like, this literally blew my mind. I'm like, I have to get a hold of this dude. And then I go look at a bunch of news groups, and he's commenting from his Facebook. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to fucking inbox this dude. And he messaged me, and he even joked later that he was like telling his wife, like, this guy doesn't understand my postulation, so I need to explain <laughs> to him. As like, while we're like writing from family events on, on a Sunday to each other. But and I I'm also like, love, you- when, not to interrupt you, but when we get non-musicians on the podcast, it's always really fun because you think like, oh, everyone's so busy, it takes them forever to answer emails. Damien is someone that does literally everything and also answers your email within Don't 30 seconds. Don't call him a non-musician, he just, he'll be mad. because he, No, he, he is a musician, really well. but I'm just, I'm just saying it's always funny to snap oh, back shit. into the reality of, of the corporate world where you're like, oh, it is possible to do everything and be on top of communication. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, just... Things I never thought I'd learn on this podcast. Uh, that's definitely a big episode for that. Going uh, going a little further back, though, uh, we have Jonathan Weiner, uh, amazing master engineer. So we like that was a cool one to kind of get the the you know the behind the scenes of of what the myst- the mystical magic of mastering does for. Uh, for all your favorite records that you've heard. And you can tell that he's such a great teacher because when I went back and listened to his episode after recording it, everything he said was so well-spoken and so concise and so descriptive that that's definitely one where you're going to get a lot of information about audio stuff and just great stories, but in a really well-presented way. Yeah, I think Ben and I were, were trying to pick like every last bit of information we could get out of that guy's brain. Yeah. <laughs> it really made me upset, to be honest with you, because he made me like question my entire existence as a quote-unquote audio engineer. And then I went out to dinner with him because we're actually real-life friends. And he's like, don't believe everything you hear. I'm like, I hate you, man. He's great. <laughs> Honestly, Jonathan Weiner, like he's one of the coolest, smartest, like... That dude, he's a brain. He is. Yeah, yeah don't don't miss out on that one. Um, prior to that, Sammy Ash uh, of oh Sam Ash Music. In case there's like any confusion there, Sam Ash Music, that that giant chain that you're all familiar with. Another person way out of our pay grade. Yeah. <laughs> well, first off, what a cool guy. Because you know what? Like it's, on my show, the Neurotic Guitarist, I sit and I talk about like. Screw Guitar Setter, Sweetwater, and I I shit on a bunch of people. But Sam Ash, like, they've been around for, like, a hundred years, man. Like, they're they're the OG, like, what Guitar Center tries to be. So, like, you know, you think of them as being the big guy. And it's like, you talk to this dude and you're like, well, you understand why he's been around for a hundred years. And, like, why everyone buys guitars from from this guy. And why they have such a great company. And the fact that 
someone as high as Sammy Ash, you know, the guy on the dot com. Sammy Ash comes and talks to us about his company. And like he was excited to talk to us like yeah. he was. It made me feel good about us. It was cool, too, because how often do you get to talk to someone that's like running a incredibly successful expanding like business that's like over 100 years old and still family owned so hyper successful you know you don't really get that kind of insight on a daily basis so it's like that's a great one uh for sure and uh uh before that uh our episodes with david ellison who started a uh, we got we got a bunch of press on those ones which is always cool well yeah i mean it's funny because like dave mustaine has moved on to like picking on Metallica now like we could have done more stuff together I think that's the new thing it's like we me and James talked but Lars sucks um but at one point everything out of Dave Mustaine's mouth was talking about Junior otherwise David Ellison who's our genuine friend I love that guy and the fact is like I can't even keep up with him he's like literally the energizer bunny like no matter what's going on in the world you could tell like David Ellison has a new project and he's inspirational because he's a great example of someone that, you know, when you get knocked down from something, especially something that you've been in for such a long time, he is like the perfect example of just like keep on going. I mean, it's like every time we've interviewed him, regardless of where he's been in his career, it's been it's been really inspiring to talk to him. So that's a that's a great one for anyone that's interested in that. He's like merely a flesh wound. <laughs> Yeah. Very and, resilient. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, prior to that, keeping the, the Dave train rolling, we had Dave Fortman. Uh, an oh, amazing, Dave amazing Fred. producer. Yeah. Rad! That dude's <laughs> rad, man. And, uh, so yeah, rad. Dave produced, you know, bands like Slipknot and Mudvayne and Evanescence that I just saw went like, like, like ten diamond. times platinum. Diamond, that, like, yeah, diamond. So he's he sold. He didn't just produce them. Tens, he actually helped write some of yeah, those songs. Tens, and, like, like millions of records. It's it's incredible. There's no reason that you have to bring them back to life. They've been to life this entire time, and that's why Dave has a beautiful apartment in in Florida. Yeah, so that that's a great one to check out. Um, just for the the Super music, the music history. Dude. Yeah, great. Our- By the way, side note: Corey went down to Florida and worked with Dave and sang a beautiful rendition of "Renegade" by Styx. And uh, <laughs> amazing! I, think you throw I didn't that. even know that. I, wow! I, I'm I think learning you should throw today. that video on there, Corey. That video is fantastic. You should throw you and Dave Fortman singing "Will Break the Internet." That should be a short. Absolutely. <laughs> it's with if, Shane if from Apocalypse care. Blues Revival. Go for it! Give me some sticks. Oh, mama, I'm in fear for my life from. Uh, before Dave, we had our buddy Richard Shaw on, who's been on a few times and is always like one of our favorite More people. More news. He was one of the hottest news guys we had. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He this had just, entire year. Yeah. Yeah. He, he talked about uh, leaving Cradle of Filth and, uh, and detailed some of the behind the scenes stuff going on there. Uh, We're not going to take it. <laughs> We kind of have the full biography of Richard Shaw at this point. We might as well turn it into like a mini series because he's been on a few times and we, we've caught him at different points in his career. So it's it's been cool to catch up with him and, and, and see how things have changed, you know? Yeah, and he's a funny, funny love, bastard. I love that guy, though. Like He literally has been, since our first few episodes, has been like our friend. And it's it's one of those things where like, why, why would he come on your show? It's funny because we had so many comments on that show. Like, so if you haven't watched the episode with Richard, crazy amounts of comments. And a lot of people are like, why are you just talking to him that way? It's like, because he's literally just our friend. For real. Like, we just wanted to catch up with our buddy and you're just voyeuristically watching it or listening. Yeah, yeah. I, I would not miss out on any of those Richard episodes. They're, they're always a good Never. time. Uh, Kishibashi. Siobhan, Kishi, Siobhan Kishi is my, yeah, it. my friend. So a, a rare violinist appearance, uh, someone that I've, I met years ago. He came and played with an orchestra that I play with here in, in Miami and uh, great for, you know, he had some great stories about formulating a sound and creating your own solo projects. It's he's somebody that kind of went across all spectrums of music and he's a, he was a great story, you know, great things to listen to. Literally the dude that you're going to be like sitting one day watching TV and they're like lifetime achievement award goes to kishibashi you're like i i know that wow it makes total sense if you listen if you listen to him talk you're like oh dude you've cracked the universe 
<laughs> and uh and then uh before that uh ben's buddy jim wysocki oh my god all right ben this, so you're the expert on jimmy so for those that don't know i'm working i've been working for over a year now on a a documentary on les paul but even more importantly kind of like how this this dude my friend the mayor of mawa new jersey jimmy wysocki was like kind of inexplicably intertwined with the life of Les Paul. And this dude is wild. I mean, in 1981, he was just answering the phone for the police. And now he's running the town. And we just, by the way, since that episode, gave a key to the town of Mawa, New Jersey, on behalf of the of the citizenship and Les Paul, to Billy freaking Gibbons. And we have it all on tape. Like, that guy's the coolest. And if you go watch him, he literally became the mayor by just like shaking hands and kissing babies. He's he's the coolest, nicest guy ever. Literally ever. Yeah, uh, he was a, he was a blast to talk to, and obviously, uh, he, he's funny because he has all these rock star stories. But as like <laughs> kind of like as like an outsider, like he's like the guy standing next to all the rock stars, and he's got all this stuff, and he he, he sees everything. He's the, he's like the sober one that can remember all the stories. <laughs> right, <laughs> we all really, need one of those yeah, people. <laughs> it was real fun talking to him. Uh, Not always sober, though. It depends on whether he's on duty. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve Wood, prior to that. And by the way, guys, uh, 2020-D.com. You can, you can check out all these episodes. They're all there in the archive. But uh, yes, Steve Wood, and we're, Mr. Steve we're Wood. Be, by the way, for those that don't have the, the attention span, we are going to be making some shorts of a bunch of this stuff because we realize that there's so much amazing. There's so many amazing things that not even us who are there can can totally comprehend the awesomeness of it so um you know we'll we'll get you to some of the meat and potatoes if you uh don't have the attention span yeah and ben is of, busy multitasking yeah. here doing something that i don't <laughs> my know iron but made it my iron maiden frame like the the record fell and it wasn't perfectly equidistant from like the edge of everything and it was driving me crazy uh, so the ocd took over and started speaking to me in my head and if i didn't <laughs> fix it i was gonna die well, coming back to Steve Wood, he's sort of our second British ambassador. I, I don't really know what the hierarchy is with with Rich, Richard and Steve. Steve, <laughs> Steve, yeah. Steve okay. Richard, Richard acknowledged it, but that's fine because it's it's certainly age before beauty. But uh, Steve Wood is is the ultimate, you know, being next to rock stars. He's been around everyone from what George Harrison, Paul McCartney. So he works with some of the biggest names in rock and roll and all genres of music. So we've had him on multiple times. This was probably our second or third time having him on this year. Uh, since we started, but yeah, it, like you never know what you're going to get with Steve. Always some surprise in the works. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's one of those like Forrest Gump guys that that's like in, yeah. at every major <laughs> musical event, he was like standing and, you know, kind of off to the side there observing <laughs> right. it. And then, yeah, literally he's my spirit animal. I, first off, I want you to know, I talk to Steve on a regular basis and he, there's no reason he has to talk to us. He's independently wealthy. He's doing cool stuff. Like, there is no reason. And he always answers my phone call like he's excited to talk to me. And if you watch this, he's always excited to talk to us and tell us the secrets of rock and roll. I mean, literally, just to sum it up, he talked about how Soundgarden broke up. He talks about, like... Some really he's not crazy. just talking about it because he was there. That's why he's talking. He was, like, there. He was like telling. He's like, you know, like minute by minute the process it. of it happening. Yeah, but uh, like he has no fear. He's like, oh yeah. So when I was jamming with George Harrison, you're like not even surprised. And that's not even the craziest thing he said within 20 minutes. Yeah. No. There's there's unlimited uh, rock and roll stories in in those episodes. Make sure you check them out. Uh, and then before that, Mr. Keith Wallen, which was a great. Great couple episodes we had there. It was right after we uh, we had seen Breaking Benjamin perform with Star Set, so it was really cool to kind of like see him for the first time on stage and then get a chance to talk to him. Yeah, Keith is like one of the nicest people in all of the rock world. He's like so polite, nice Southern guy. Like uh, obviously, we met when I was uh, doing we were doing a support tour with Breaking Benjamin. We toured with them over the summer this year. And, you know, of course, I hunted him down. I'm like, hey, want to come on our podcast? And he had some great stories to tell. Um, you know, he, he's just an awesome guy. Dude, Keith is great. And I feel bad because <clears throat> he was so kind because Cindy, my fiance, always laments that I take her to go see like Aerosmith or Paul McCartney. Band she doesn't want to see. Like we're going to go see uh, um, uh, Peter Wolf 
um, from the Jay Giles band. And she's like, who? She's so annoyed. But she's like, I want to go see Bush breaking Benjamin. I'm like, I can arrange this. <laughs> message, message Keith. He's, yeah, man, let's go hang out. I'm like, really? Sure. I, I, first off, his episodes are so inspiring, but also so relatable as a musician because like, if you ever wonder why a guy like Keith is in an amazing band playing huge venues every night, it's because he literally ate shit sandwiches like every other musician that's in that sort of situation for fucking 25 years of his life. And he deserves every moment in that light. When I got to see him play on stage with Alice in Chains. And by the way, Bush opened before them. So like, if that tells you how badass that dude is, Keith is the man. But I felt bad because I got cornered by the, by Chris, the head of Fishman uh, Electronics, super nice dude, but Keith's trying to talk to me. Meanwhile, this dude's like, so for quarter one, we just uh, made Mike Inez's bass pickup, and it was great. It sold really like, and Keith's just like, I gotta go, and I was like, dude, I love you, and I didn't I didn't want to be mean to Chris because I'm like, I'll take your pickups, they're awesome, but like. <laughs> Keith just walked away and he was like, by the fuck. He was like, dude, I couldn't handle it. And I'm like, I didn't mean to download on you the Fishman first quarter summation. It sounds like quite great the, stories the, that didn't happen on the podcast. Yeah. So no, if you want to know about Ben's personal life, <laughs> I love Keith, man. He's the man. And by the way, if you, I don't know if they've released it or if you can go see it in bootleg form on YouTube, they covered Queen Who Wants to Be, uh, Who Wants to Live Forever from the Highlander soundtrack and holy fucking shit it's so good and Keith's singing that guy's got a voice of a Amazing fucking voice. angel yeah he's got yeah. a great voice in fact he he is he is uh as as told in the podcast been known to open for himself by by playing the opening <laughs> set for Breaking Benjamin <laughs> yep <laughs> indeed say. um and then also kind of an, another guy from that that tour uh that we had right before Keith Wong was Corey Lowry of Seether. Uh, All who was right. not, seemed like he seems like a fun guy to, to party with, but he, right. we, we had a good time. We had a good time on the, on the podcast there. Corey Siobhan was just remembers hoot. her friends with like 15 number one singles. That's the funny <laughs> part. I literally love when I have people on and I'm like, hey man, that's great. Like you had a number one. He's like, yeah, like 15 of them. I mean, not me. I mean, I'm not the main guy, but like I'm in the band that has the number one singles. I love when I get school like that and I go and look and since... Corey Lowry, who's such a great guitarist, like came on, like, see, there has haunted me. They're freaking everywhere. I will just never forget on that tour going on to see there's bus and they had like 80s MTV videos just constantly playing like in the front lounge of the bus. And there's there's always a drink to be made. And they, they were just like such a good time group like that was one of the the most fun tours that we ever did and it was it was so cool to meet these guys like both keith and and Corey. i mean having Corey on was awesome he told us some amazing stories too but Super he was very candid. real v very, very real, real. About, very real about you know like hey man you see, it doesn't matter if you're in a band with a bunch of number ones like it's a hard life 23 hours of the day when you're on tour and like it could break the best of you and honestly it's pretty much crazy people that tour <laughs> yeah accurate <laughs> <laughs> valuable life lessons um before Corey, uh we had a couple episodes with our drummer in lost symphony mr paul lorenzo which, which is always always entertaining to to get someone that, that you know the songs yeah <laughs> we, songs! It's, it's, it's a rare um like uniting of, of lost symphony which which doesn't happen very often but we get to kind of talk about the project a little bit and paul has been playing music forever and he's he's got tons of uh insight paul is someone with like eternal talent like just like every every possible thing you can be good at i feel like paul is good at he's an artist he's a musician songwriter he arranges stuff i mean he's awesome it's it's so cool to learn about him it, the greatest thing about him is that he is it's like having the mona lisa in your basement but nobody knows but you can like look at it yourself he's like the greatest drummer that nobody's trying to steal away from you <laughs> just coming to my house all the time recording whatever i want and like we work on songs we have 45 songs from the last two years almost fully produced what are we doing with them who knows? Keeping them in your basement. <laughs> <laughs> On redundant hard drives, Siobhan. <laughs> yeah. Um, definitely, yeah. So check out Paul's stuff. Um, Lawsymphony.com, yeah, guys. If you want to learn a little Chapters bit. Chapters one through three. 
those episodes, that's episode uh, 137, 138, and that's where we kind of talk about the band a little bit. You know, we don't talk about the band uh, in depth in most of our podcasts, but uh, in, in the ones where we have people like Paul on, we do kind of like, you know, pull the curtain back a little bit, which is nice. So all of you Lost Symphony fans out there, <laughs> make sure you check those out. Um, and before, Thanks, before Paul, and we're getting back, wow, we're almost, we're almost through the year there. We've had a lot of people on. Um, we got a few more though. And uh, before Paul, we had the, uh, the TSO guys. We had uh, Chris Caffrey and and Joel Hoekster, both separate well, you episodes. Can't put, don't, no, don't, yeah, don't put but. them together. Let's talk about Chris first. <laughs> Chris is awesome. I mean, like Chris is such a nice guy. He's like, I mean, it was cool. Even check out his YouTube on that one because in his in his house he has um, he has a bar that he's built out and he makes all sorts of seagulls. I mean, he's like Shannon the, Larkin. He's yeah. got this fucking crazy universe and he's got a stuffed elephant. That travels yes, around with him. Wilbur, he's, yeah. He's, I mean, he's, no, go ahead, Ben. Well, I mean, listen, man. It's one of those things where at first you could kind of tell like he's like almost ready like to go to to, to bat. Like he's like ready to fight you because he's used to touring and getting the shit kicked out of him on the road just because he's like, but he's so talented. And if you look also at the band TSO, I think they're like the eighth or 10th highest grossing band in the history of time of touring bands. And Chris is one of the huge parts of him. He goes all the way back to Sabotage. But this guy, talk about being an underdog from day one that's now literally playing two show, sold out shows a day. Like, he's an interesting dude. And also from Mawa, New Jersey, and a Les Paul friend. Yeah. Now, Chris is someone who has lived the life of touring since being basically a kid, you know? He, he talks about, I think, wasn't Metallica opening up for them or he, Metallica wanted to stay in, in his mom's basement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she said, no, there's some great stories about the early days, really like yeah. the development of rock music and like the breaking out of Sabotage, the creation of TSO. He's I mean, his episodes are jam packed with a lot of really Chris, cool information. Chris is the dude that like you wouldn't recognize at the bar that would be dropping knowledge. And you're like, there's no way. And it's like, Google me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, make sure you check those ones out. Joel Hextra. He's a busy guy. He's a busy guy. <laughs> Wicked busy. <laughs> he's yeah. a, he's I mean, very busy to the point that we had one short episode. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't think I've ever had more back and forth with um, a manager about talking about talking to someone about maybe possibly coming on to maybe do something and then having them come on after all this level of communication to be completely uncommunicated to like when we told them so okay listen guys you've seen all of our guests we have a lot of really good people most of them stay for two hours there's a few times where people like have had to go or they've been like whatever but most of them stay for two hours and we con them and it's not a problem when we told Joel Hoekstra, Hextra, whatever his name, when we told that dude, <laughs> like the guy from White Snake, looked him in the face, hey man, we're going to do two hours. He's like, it's looking, it was looking off to his like non-existent manager, like, is this like a joke? Where, where's my Evian? Like, hold on, my connection, I can't hear you. What? Yeah. Hold on. I think, I think he's basically, he basically was like, I have, I have shit to do in a half hour. Let's. Let's go. So it's a very concise episode. It, it, it you know, it's it's got a little bit of, of his backstory. We try to we Don't try to dig deep. Heroes. We try to we I try to dig great deep. Guitars. If you guys listen, you, you know that we do our first episode. We try to learn about the person. Second episode, we generally try to get you know a little little under the water. We didn't get a chance to do that with Joel. I we think got it's about still, six inches. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth checking out. Um, Pl plenty any, of other TSO material. Go go listen to to Chris and and Roddy and the, yeah. you know the other people. Roddy yeah. Chong, man, yeah. that oh, guy's wait, wait, awesome. Wait, wait. That might not have been this year though. It, We're getting no, ahead of ourselves. I think are, that was are, 2021. We are okay. At, prior to, uh, to to Chris's episodes, Chris Caffrey's, uh, we had Gary Holt. So like we're continuing the train here. Like these are some okay. some some absolute monsters in the music industry. Oh dude, I love Gary Band. But but man, he's a polite dude. But like it was funny because we because he I asked him forever. I harassed the shit out of him on Instagram. And he's like really nice. <laughs> he's wicked nice. And like he likes my memes. We both like cats, even though he doesn't have a cat, which I think is hysterical. Um, super nice grandpa lives in a really quiet area, but writes very angry music. May have played in Slayer. Like super cool dude comes on, 
Siobhan had to go. First episode, totally <laughs> awesome. Second episode, I encourage everybody, go watch. Corey and I are like, yeah, so like when you were being cool in that cool band, he's like, yeah, man. So like he wasn't hextraing us. He wasn't giving us a Joel from Whitesnake, but like he was kind of giving us like the, Ben, do you want me to watch your memes? <laughs> yeah. Some, sometimes our credibility walks out the door when Siobhan signs off. It, it, oh, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing to look at. <laughs> but they, they're great episodes, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Gary's the man. Um, He's yeah. amazing, dude. What a great guitarist. And seriously, how cool would it be for that dude to be your grandfather? <laughs> Grandpa sure. Holt. The, uh, the guest before him is, is someone who's... Uh, uh, just an absolute animal and an, and an absolute pleasure to uh, to know. And that's Cody Ash, uh, drummer oh, for Cody Jelly Roll. Ash. Uh, I remember when Cody's I wanted to get Cody on the podcast, and, and and Corey was like, "What is Jelly Roll?" Yeah, I thought they were a band. I'm like, it, I'm like, this is a weird name for a band. Well, like, no, we had we had him coming on, and Javon's like, "Jelly Roll's coming." Uh, we looked it up, like the, like Jelly Roll, uh, and Corey and I were like. Is it, so they're coming to the so, the so Jelly Roll, they're coming to the Palladium, <laughs> thinking that Jelly Roll is like a plural. Yeah. Je- I mean, he's a big no, dude. Jelly Roll, dude. Jelly Roll. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. I think like tonight or like uh, they're playing like the friggin' uh, arena in Nashville, like sold out the Bridgestone Arena. Like uh, talk about like a trajectory. Like Jelly Roll went from, uh, and I, I take full responsibility for being ignorant, but I had no idea who, who he was and and the and the, the the music and everything. Ben and I, after our our podcast with Cody Ash, which was an absolute riot, went and saw them play at the Palladium uh, in Worcester and were blown the fuck away. It was the most packed I've ever seen that place. Everyone was singing every single word, and it, it was like. It was like a it was like a redneck star set show. It was like, we literally yeah. said to him, "We're like, dude, you're gonna be playing huge places." And he's like, "Dude, we already have our tour booked. It's not gonna happen right now." Like a month later, he's like just posting like crazy pictures everywhere, like arenas, giant freaking festivals, and like ever since. I, I mean, I, I hear I hear Jelly Roll on like rock radio. I hear oh, yeah, Jelly got- Roll. Country t- chart chart topping like it's ridiculous. No, he's incredible. Cody's incredible. I kept telling him I I felt bad because I said because uh, we had Shannon Larkin on and I think he's such a great drummer. I'm like, yeah, friends with Shannon L- Larkin. At the end of the night, he was like, yeah, man, that Shannon Larkin guy. And then he goes out and just murders it, murders it with his <laughs> fucking just a stash and it's totally happening hair and his fucking glat murdering and i now i saw he has a two kick drums he's going full blow i love that guy he's gonna i I hope one day that jelly roll when he comes on stage that cody comes on with like the nick menza kit from megadeth from like 93 (laughs) where they have to like wheel him in and he has like six drums and he's got his hairs even louder and he's got like light up kits with like fucking fire on his sticks yeah, he, Cody's the man. His episodes, it, they're a party. He, he shotguns a beer in the middle of an episode. So that's that, that's kind of gives a party. vibe. And uh, and you know what I love is you know less than a year after after meeting him for the first time and hanging out with him at the Palladium, uh, I saw he was coming around. And he played at Xfinity Center in Mansfield. You know, in front of eighteen thousand people with Shine Down. So like just be able to see a trajectory like that in such a short amount of time it was incredible we Uh, do the show so we can basically get tickets to concerts that's really the only reason (laughs) it's it's thank you keith and thank you cody for helping us out um my fiance (laughs) unofficial sponsors of 2020 (laughs) uh yeah so definitely check out the cody episodes they're they're a blast um dude he's for him uh (laughs) Another, uh, or a, a, a local legend to us, or at least a current local legend, uh, Shota Nakama, who's, uh, Shota. A, absolutely, uh, Shota's a, a Jedi. Fountain. Yeah, exactly. Dude, he's in Japan literally right now. He's so annoying. Cause first off <laughs> his stories, like, cause the thing is, it's like you, he's very like, he's sly and he's got like this kind of soft spoken sarcasm. Because he's like, oh, yeah, I could be a big deal. Literally, in Portuguese, his name means take my pussy to the bed. So when he goes just, down and plays Brazil. Just, just pussy in bed. They, yeah. yeah, they they literally <laughs> roll him out 
on a bed. So, like, so I see his story on his Instagram and he's just coming out on a bed sitting like this. And there's just a crowd of people like all cheering. And I'm thinking to myself, how cool do you have to be? Shota Nakama cool. He's, he's an absolute like A-list celebrity in Brazil. It's hilarious. And, no, and around the world. He wrote, he wrote Final Fantasy. He writes the music for the Marvel Universe. I bet you that he's probably had his music with the video game orchestra. Whether you know them or not, if you play video games, you've heard him probably more than Journey. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but you know he he has a, a really cool story coming from Japan and coming uh, to, to you know ending up in Boston and, and going through Berkeley and all that stuff and, and he's here now he's got a great company he's he's uh, the reverse he's a, Marty Friedman he's yeah, the exactly. tall Japanese guy <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that came over to the United States to become an ambassador of Japan but nobody cares about him in Japan versus the short American guy that goes over and does nine hundred shows in Japan the becomes Mister Guitar Friedman. that's oh, it's boy. completely true. That's very. I love yeah, Marty Friedman. Funny. I can't wait till he comes on. <laughs> there, he's coming. He's coming through, through on tour, right? With uh, Dude, with the op opening uh, for uh, Queens, right? January, February, March, April. He's coming through in April seventh yeah. to the Palladium in Worcester, Massachusetts, and our good friend Steve Wood is now managing Marty Friedman. Uh, and I kept saying, I will be, I, so, I will be there. <laughs> so listen, guys, this is true. I'm going to quote Steve on our show. I'm going to send him this video. I said, Steve, I don't think Marty would want to come on our show. And he goes, Oh, why would he want to come on your show? I'm like. I just don't feel like he wants to come on. He's like, Betty, I could get him on your show. I'm like, I don't think you can. He's like, I'm managing it. Like, he starts fighting me like he could get me Marty Friedman. I'm like, okay. You ask Marty Friedman if he wants to come talk to us. And we'll see how that goes. Sure I that. love Marty. He's literally my favorite guitarist like since the dawn of time other than Nuno. I love you, Nuno. That would be that would be a hell of an episode. I, I hope that happens. Imagine we had Nuno and Marty at the same time, and then Skolnick's <laughs> oh refereeing. Gosh. Like, oh my god, that's <laughs> cool. Uh, that would. He's be, like the libertarian. For now, if you want, if you want to hear those three, you just got to go check out "Take Another Piece" by Lost Symphony. And then that's you can, right. You can get all that. Um, uh, uh, speak, speaking of which, uh, before uh, Shoda, uh, Alex Skolnick was our guest. Alex Skolnick, good timing, Ben. Yeah. Alex Dude. is like another Jedi slash encyclopedia. He is like knows everything about everything in my book. So so mm. insightful. I want you to go watch his episode. So I I have now edited a bunch of of interviews with him because we interview him on the on the neurotic guitarist. And by where I mean me, I interview him. Um, he doesn't look right at you. He kind of looks off, and then he's like, you could see he's processing like RoboCop. He's like, dit, 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 dit. <laughs> this might be a good answer. And you could see his eyes kind of like moving, like that dude from Identity, just like real fast, like, oh, you could see the future. Like, that's Alex Skolnick, dude. He's fucking savant. And you know Jedi. this because he he tells you his parents, he's like, oh, I'm the dumbest at my table because my parents are like professors and like I'm the misanthrope of the fucking. You're like, oh, bro, <laughs> I don't want to come to your Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of, lot of uh, aside from just his, his insight on everything, you know, he's got a podcast, Moods and Modes, which is really great. Talks about Testament a lot. Uh, so dude, I was on his podcast. for Dude, there, there's a less podcast. With Jimmy Wysocki, this crazy fucking dude, Alex Golnick. I don't know how to feel about this other than I love him because he's psycho. He, when we went and filmed it, he recorded the whole thing with his phone the whole time. He recorded it, and so instead of it even just using the neurotic, he did take from the neurotic guitarist, like, okay, whatever, he was there, take it. But he was recording it in his pocket, so he actually, like, had a concealed thing. And I don't really care, but, like, we didn't know, really. So then, when he put together this <laughs> <Irrelevant>. episode, <laughs> that we listened to this episode, and it's like, whoa, that's the whole conversation. And it's like, I mean, it's great how it was done and it's really interesting, but it was like, oh, wow, Alex, you're, you're like a secret detective. Undercover. Sleuth. Yeah. That's why we make our guests sign waivers so that, uh, you know, <laughs> Al, I love Alex, man. He's such a, I mean, honestly, every time I see him play guitar on his channel, I'm just like, what? he's yeah. freakishly good. Phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, and then Kevin Martin, uh, Candlebox. That was, that Kevin was Kevin Martin. That was such wow, a that feels was such like a forever fun ago. So yeah. He That's yeah, he was Forrest awesome. Gump. Dude, I mean Candlebox, I mean I go I have such an emotional response to that. I said this I was so happy to say this to him on the show because my first rock and roll t-shirt ever was a Candlebox 
with the middle finger for you, fuck you shirt. And I remember I used to get so many dirty looks because of it. And I was like, Kevin Martin, you're fucking cool, man. <laughs> yeah, the, a lot of like grunge talk, which we, we don't get to a lot on the show. But, it was, yeah. you know, as someone who was in, you know, Seattle and doing doing their thing in kind of the prime of, of, of grunge and, uh, and, and coming up as a fan of it, he was just, I think, uh, on the tail end of it. So he, he kind of got the experience of like, you know, seeing all these bands, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, all these, all these guys, and then, then catapulting up with uh, Candlebox himself and on the tail end of all that stuff. So really cool stories, really f interesting to hear uh, how the business has treated him and, and, and Candlebox, the band, and how he, <laughs> his opinions on the music business and, and record labels and the such. Sure. I mean, it's also interesting to see a bit a guy. You know, you have some songs that live forever, and it's but it's like, you know, when you become almost like a legacy act, which is what it is. I mean, because honestly, I mean, I was I'm 40 now. I just turned 40, and I remember like being, you know, what was it, 1993, 92, like, and that's that's the songs. But he's been making music ever since. I mean, it's not like you stop being creative. It's just when do people stop caring and it's really interesting to hear from a perspective of someone who sold millions and millions and millions of records whose songs still get played all the time but at the same time like it's hard to make it in the music industry that's for sure yep and uh coming down to our final few guests here of 2022 uh mr ron bumblefoot thal who's oh my gosh ron absolute treat like such a fun episode <laughs> He was like talking and playing guitar at the same time. It was like so, like so much going on. Only guy who's ever actually had the audacity to play guitar on our show. And by audacity, he, we're honored because it's like if Picasso it's like, would you like me to paint for you? <laughs> yeah. yeah he, Are you playing interested? eruption backwards? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like it's like you know li listening to Edgar Allan Poe and saying like, would would you like me to to do a reading of the Raven? It's like the Bumblefoot playing like, you know, uh, the universe rocks off the top of his head from like when he was 11 years old. Play That's another guy. See, so here's the difference. Alex Skolnick looks off into the distance as he's calculating. Ron Bumblefoot will look you right in the eye and he'll be thinking. And he's already knows this next six questions you're going to ask him. And he's just like, <laughs> it's the dominant. What do you mean? That's what you were going to ask. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, he's on another level. He's like sure. your Facebook feed, but he's but as a person. He's like it's like they tell you that it's not that they've been listening to your conversations. They just know what you want before you know what you want. That's kind of how Ron is with music. He knows what's good before you know what's good without you even knowing it's good at all. And then he tells you why it's good as he's staring at you, making you feel inferior as he's being nice. The episode is far less confusing than Ben just made it seem. I promise exactly. you that. It was, it's a As always. great talk. <laughs> the universe you know, rocks. If, if you are a musician or a guitar player, there's a lot of great stuff in there. But even if you're not, uh, there's you know a lot of stuff about growing up, playing music, and, uh, and rock and roll in general. So can can I ask you this, though? If he could be the voice of Waze or Google Maps... Dude, I mean, would you not get to every place? Because like, I feel like where I get mad in Boston traffic, I'm sure Miami traffic's the same thing. Like, if it was just Bumblefoot being like, now just wait a minute. You know, whatever, oh, with his, sure. that beautiful voice of his. I mean, I can't do it right. He's an orator. He certainly Sings is. for fucking yes. Or Asia. 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 <laughs> Heat of the moment. Yeah. Uh, definitely check those out. That's episode 120 and 121. And then... The first guest of 2022 in our in our in a final guest, last but not least of our recap. Does anyone have any guesses of our of this guest? Was it Pinnock? No. Nope. Uh who was before Bumble? It wasn't Roddy. Nope. I know the suspense is killing everyone. It, Shannon. It, it no. was it was not. No. We're gonna we're gonna finish off strong with Star Set again. We got we got our, our favorite uh cellist Z. Oh, Z. She, she, she started. She started the year off. So yeah. So we started. Kind of started and ended with Star Set. Wow. That's, what a wrap. <laughs> that is very fun. The year, the year of Star Set on the 2020. Year of, the year well, of Star and Set. And Bumblefoot sa saying the universe rocks. So like we, <laughs> it all comes. The cosmos comes. It together. all comes full circle. No, Z has an amazing story. I mean, everybody we talked to, as we've heard, has an amazing story. But she's also yeah, in Lost Symphony now. Also in Lost Symphony, but. 
Yeah, as someone that was a musician and then left the world of music for a long time and then came back, she's got a great and super relatable story for anybody that like I don't think your sure. story is that relatable because I mean how many people like go and leave music and then come back and play for 70,000 people and then Moonlight <laughs> also in a band that has billions of streams <laughs> I feel like that's not that relatable I mean granted it's motivational it's like why, it's when motivational. I grow up when I grow up that's what I'm gonna do and then she has like a perfectly chiseled husband that's like a wonderful guy that you want to hate him but like you meet him immediately you're like you're so warm and nice like I mean everything about her life is great I just want to be her <laughs> She's always playing amazing gigs. Her and Marco. And I, you know what? That's the crazy thing. I'm like, I say, I saw, I'm like, what's going on, Marco? Like, she's playing with Adele. And then yes. on any given night, like, even though it's not Adele, like, you could, Z's like, oh, she's like playing the Bellagio with her girls, just playing some party or some club. Or then she's playing the, some, the stadium that whatever football station people play at. In Vegas, the Colts is that the Raiders? The, the Raiders, the Raiders, it's that, Ve that Vegas, the Raiders. Life. Yeah, but she plays the, on the Raiders home team band, so it's like seventy thousand people, and then Z playing like ah, no big deal. You can hear me in front of everybody. I am that she gets broadcast to billions. There we go. Yes, so so it's finishing strong. Solid year, a solid year for a for twenty twenty for the podcast. Year. Uh, we thank Damn. you, everyone that's that's listened or watched. If if you if you actually watched and listened to all those episodes we just talked about, I'm sorry, this episode must have been terrible. <laughs> but <laughs> if you haven't listened to those, we hope we gave you at least a little There's bit. There's that of, one uh, star set fan that's following us and like making a <laughs> list of all the ones. Like she's like, well, I did, I'm, I guess I have to go get the Kevin Martin episode now. Oh, it was a nice trip down memory lane. Sometimes I, I mean, we do these episodes and then sometimes I, I got to go back and listen because there are things that I, even I don't remember. So it's kind of great to go back and recap what well, all the people we talk to. Well, sometimes when Siobhan's lackadaisical and we get like really maniacal and have to cut things to the last minute to do this, I go, why are we doing this? But then when we it's do all these my recaps, <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, but like the, see again, when you wake up and you have no idea who Kishi Bashi is, at the beginning of the day and then by the end of the day you're like oh let me drink in your wisdom oh kishi bashi okay because if you don't know who kishi bashi is like you should go listen like just learn and then take it from a dumb guy who thinks that i can learn nothing i learned something from kishi <laughs> well yeah, believe I, it or not our podcast apparently has you know revealed some of the stories of some of the biggest rock stars which is super cool and like amazing stories from people and i feel like we've gotten really deep with everybody well, for the most part. Yeah. No, Not Joel Hextra. No. <laughs> Joel Hextra was in, we got about six Guys, feet, six inches. I feel like if I a, was to jump into a pool and it was Joel Hextra, that I would literally <laughs> just take me, do not, DNS, do not resuscitate. He's, he's a busy guy. Um, Vegetable but we, we, do, we thank you guys for checking it out. Um, as, as we wrap up the year, we're going to take a couple weeks off for the first time since we started this podcast. We're taking, taking a couple weeks off so we can... Uh, Get some more episodes put together for you guys to kick off the new year, uh, 2023. Uh, if you have any suggestions, people you want us to talk to, put them in the comments, and Ben will probably message them and annoy the shit out of them until they agree to come on the show. Uh, if you like any of the previous guests we've had and you want to hear more, put in the comments. Uh, most of them still like us. and They might come back. So, yeah, let us know. That would be great to hear from you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, guys, it, it, the thing you need to look forward to in 2023 is that we're putting on our big girl pants. Because, um, well, I mean, Siobhan's the only one with the walk-in closet, as you can see behind her. That's actually just a walk-in closet. Um, is that we, we, we want you... We don't feel like we've done all of our guests the justice that they've done us by coming on our show, by getting this program out to them the best that we can. We really want to hear from you guys. We want to be more interactive this next year. We want to bring the quality of the show better as far as everything from the production to listening to what you guys say. I mean, I know you guys want me to shut up, so I've tried to shut up a little bit. Like, whatever New Year's resolutions we need to make, we're going to do it for you when we come back. It's going to yes. be with a vengeance. We're going to be back top, top of the year. I think January 1st will be our next episode. Uh, enjoy the holidays, uh, you know, do all the be merry uh you know light hanukkah candles do whatever the hell you like doing when it's cold and crappy here uh, yeah and listen to some more 2020 episodes share them with friends if you know anybody that's interested in music or business or entrepreneurship or just kind of a funny show with some weird quirky people say send some of our episodes to people that you know share the love i mean listen you know 
it's a very hard time of the year. You're trying to get your friends presents. You can't afford that shit. You know what? <laughs> like if you have a musician friend and they're like, man, I'm trying to make it in a band. Just send them like Damien Real. And then they, you could save them a whole bunch of fucking grief. There's just, there's basically, we're the gift that can help you get these things across for free. Like, you want to know how to save money in the music industry? Ask Keith. Just quit. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> yeah, I guess we're the gift that that keeps didn't on even say trying that. to give. That's the weird we're, part. We're the gift that keeps on giving. And right. I guess on that like note, herpes. yeah. Check out two zero two zero d dot com. We'll see you in a few weeks. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. We'll see you soon. Star set forever. Subscribe. <laughs> oh, here's the thing. Ja Rule needs to go, okay? <laughs> I would, if I could cancel anyone, it'd be Ja Rule. I don't want to see this motherfucker ever, all right? <laughs> he just, listen, he, he just, some people just look shady. I, I guess maybe people like shady looking people, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got milk dud head, all right? <laughs> and he's just a bullshit artist, okay? I'm sick of this dude.